Alison Sargent joins me on the set to take a look at what the papers have been saying today. Hi, Alison. Hey, Here in France, it's all about former French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who was found guilty of corruption. That's right, Jeannie. This is a very big deal uh, here in France. A lot of papers are talking about a thunderbolt. Uh, that's the front page headline from the local paper, Sud-Ouest. Uh, beyond that sense of shock and magnitude, the reactions to this are very, very divided politically. Uh, for left-wing Liberation, Sarkozy's conviction is justice for all. The paper writes that the court essentially saved the nation, putting France, quote, on the list of democracies where the powerful are subject to the justice system, uh, just like everybody else. Uh, communist paper L'Humanité is even more celebratory. Uh, the paper is happy to see Sarkozy judged as a, quote, common criminal. On their front page, they dub him the corrupter in chief. And then the investigative website Mediapart uh, is also celebrating. Uh, they were some of the ones, uh, they were really the ones responsible for bringing a lot of accusations against Sarkozy to light. Uh, Mediapart draws a parallel between Nicolas Sarkozy and Jacques Chirac, uh, who is the only other former French president to have been convicted of corruption. Uh, the, paper, uh, the, the website says both men were adept at having zero tolerance when it came to crime, unless that crime was white collar crime, and that they were both quick to invent crazy conspiracy theories as soon as the justice system came either too close to them or to their friends. Now, Alison, as you mentioned before, the French papers are really showing their political colors today. How has the conservative press been reacting to Sarkozy's conviction? Uh, differently from the left-wing press, Jeannie Le Figaro talks about a stupor and controversy on its front page today. The paper judges that the three-year partially suspended sentence uh, is of great severity, especially since, in their view, uh, this trial did not bring to light any conclusive proof against Sarkozy. Uh, in its editorial, Le Figaro writes that the verdict really leaves a bitter taste uh, and they ask who will judge the judges who, as uh, Le Figaro sees it, acted politically. Uh, L'Opinion uh, has a similar accusation about the judges today. Uh, the paper says that the judges are caught up in public conflict and revenge, especially when it comes to Nicolas Sarkozy, who once compared magistrates to small, tasteless peas. Uh, in this front page cartoon by CAC, uh, there's a reference to another one of Sarkozy's uh, famous one-liners. Uh, the judge here is asking him, would the defendant like to make a comment, and Sarkozy replies, cassation, pauvre con, uh, which is a reference to his famous uh, casse-toi, pauvre con, uh, which basically means screw off. A uh, cassation, though, of course, means uh, that he's going to file an appeal. I love those little French lessons in the press review, <laughs> Alison. Okay, outside of France, a lot of papers are also focusing on what this could mean for Sarkozy, particularly for his political future, and whether or not he could still run for president in 2022. That's right, Jeannie, and the consensus uh, in the foreign press is probably not. A Belgian paper, Le Soir, right? that the conviction is an earthquake. Uh, the paper says that some on the right were really starting to believe Sarkozy would make a comeback in 2022, uh, but they say that this really shoots down that possibility. A Spanish paper, ABC, agrees. Uh, they're bidding farewell to Sarkozy's dream of presiding over France for a second time as president. All right, we're going to step away now from Sarkozy for a word about human rights in Ghana. A number of celebrities are now calling for the government there to protect the LGBTQ community. Yeah, a group of British celebrities with Ghanaian roots has signed an open letter uh, calling for support for Ghana's LGBTQ community. Uh, the 67 signatories include actor Idris Elba, the editor-in-chief of Vogue, who you see there um, all the way on the left, and then the model Naomi Campbell, even though she's not Ghanaian. Uh, the Guardian explains that this comes... Um, after an LGBTQ center in Ghana was forced to close last week uh, after pressure from religious groups and anti-gay campaigners. Uh, police also raided the center and its leaders were forced into hiding. Uh, according to The Guardian, same-sex relationships are illegal in Ghana, uh, though laws, those laws uh, making them illegal used to be rarely enforced. In recent years, though, activists say uh, that abuses um, have really intensified due to groups of anti-gay campaigners. Uh, the Guardian writes that this show of support from celebrities is really an extraordinary show of, dias of diaspora power, um, hopefully one that's going to have an impact. Mm. Allison, just to wrap up now, of course, the coronavirus pandemic has led to a boom in new vocabulary in many different languages around the world. But there's one language that seems to have outdone the others. Tell us. That's right, Jeannie. This is uh, German. The Washington Post reports that German has added uh, over 1,200 words related to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, what I appreciate the most is that they have words for different types of masks um, and 
an Alltags mask uh, is an everyday mask. And then you have a Schnutenpulli, which is a sort of a cozier mask. It literally means a snout sweater. Um, a researcher at the Leibniz Institute for German Language told the paper uh, that the need to find new words is really psychological. It allows us to reduce our fears by having a way of really talking about a crisis. Uh, this researcher's uh, favorite new word is also my favorite. It is Fußgruß, uh, which means literally a foot greeting. Um, and one of our colleagues pointed out to me that it also rhymes in English. You can call it a feet greet. <laughs> I, I like that shooting pulley, cozier mask. I'd love to find one of those. <laughs> Allison, thank you very much for that look at today's paper. Is Allison Sargent.